Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Hey, hey, Epic Conquerors. Welcome to another amazing episode. We're going to have the greatest time on a little mini-series again this week. We're going to be talking about something a little bit different. We're going to deal with issues of back pain and spinal issues and things like that because as epic conquerors, we want to conquer every area of our lives, spirit, soul, and body. And I've got a wonderful friend here that's going to be a guest with us this week on our Monday and Friday episode talking about these amazing issues. So I would love to introduce you to Dr. Ron Fadala and just have him just share with you I'm going to call him Ron for this episode, and so you know he's like legit. <laughs> and, that is perfect. Hey, Ron, I would just love to have you share with our audience for a brief moment here, just a little introductory, like, are you married? You got kids? I mean, what's your life like in Florida? Well, life, life is great right now. Uh, we're, we're on the uh, other stage of raising children. My wife and I have been married 40 years. We're actually coming up on 40 years of marriage. Woohoo! Uh, Woo woo! It's uh, it's a good roller coaster, but you know, roller coasters are thrilling yes, and they are. Uh, not always smooth sailing. But uh, certainly, you enjoy the ride, yes. and and so we uh, we've been fortunate to enjoy the ride. Uh, we have four boys. They're not boys anymore. I guess men. They go from age thirty eight to twenty eight, and our third son is celebrating his thirtieth birthday tonight. Wow, so that's so awesome! Yeah. Four yeah, boys. You had like half a baseball team going on there. My wife did a an incredible job of that. I can't imagine what, what it would have been like if the roles were reversed, if, if I was the father of four daughters. So. Well, that's true. That's another way of looking at it. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Great. But you have a hobby that I just dearly love. You love motorcycles. And oh, I, do I love motorcycles. And I see you take trips sometimes. Do you now? Do you uh, let me ask you? Do you ride? I, I love to ride on the back of somebody else's driving it, well, but I well, just love time, taking a trip on motorcycles. Next time, next time we're together at uh, one of our seminars, then okay. we'll have to figure out a way to make that happen. But yes, I, I've been riding it. for uh, I've been riding for six years. Uh, my brother-in-law kind of goaded goaded me into it. My sister's husband. And what's interesting, and in, in talking about how you never know what's going to bring people together and knowing that you can't just plan out your life. But the short story is it brought me and one of my best, no, my best friend from where I grew up together after having not seen each other for 28 years. Wow. And, and we reconnected through a mutual friend whose son played baseball down here at the college that our son did. Um, he came out for the first uh, for the bike week and said he'd come out if I bought a bike he'd come out and ride with me which he did and ever since then we've done every bike week together and like we never missed a, a beat it is great that is fantastic what a rich treasure you know when we reconnect I recently a few <clears throat> excuse me a few years ago reconnected with a friend that I hadn't seen uh, in forty years but it was like instant connection again, and it's so fun, and you just enjoy that uh, camaraderie. It's still there as it was back in the day, so that's really a right. wonderful thing. But anyway, similarly, you and I had the same kind of thing. We met briefly a few years back, and we kind of kept in touch through different mediums, and now here we are doing a podcast together, which I just love. It's so fantastic. It is wonderful. Yeah, and I just recently on our Epic Conquerors podcast, we finished a mini series on overcoming disappointment and you really enjoyed that and sent me some comments about how that really also relates to your field and your career dealing with back issues and spine issues so um why don't you just share with our audience just a little bit about your you're a board certified chiropractic neurologist that sounds really like whoa <laughs> it's, a mouth, it's a mouthful it is sure. a mouthful and you've got other credentials here that really give you the authority and the expertise and the experience to deal with this issue but wow lower back pain spinal issues all of that 
the statistics on that are massive. Could you share some of those things with us? Oh, they're, yes, they're, they're, they're terrible actually right now and it's becoming epidemic. Uh, there are twice the percent, double the percent of the population living in chronic back pain today than there were 20 years ago. And the reason that's kind of interesting is because the percent of the population who are experiencing their first ever episode of back pain is the same as it was 20 wow. years ago. Wow. So, you know, one thing to really think about is that if what we are doing and the way we're doing it is working, then how come twice as many people are living with disability today when there hasn't really been any increase in the number of people who are having their first ever episode. And there are numerous reasons that people have researched why they think uh, this negative phenomena is occurring. Well, and you've had a lot of vast experience now with this and you've really been able to see people from all walks of life and all ages of life dealing with uh, these kinds of issues. In your experience, then, how would you kind of help us understand the basis of where does lower back pain and spinal issues kind of, where does that percolate or where does that come from? What's, yeah, what's causing that's, it? And that's, that's really a part of whether to call it a problem or a challenge, I don't know. Um, I'm just going to back up a second and say, you know, with the, the service that, that I'm running similar to yours, only in a different, you know, type of, of business, it's an online spine care service that shows people how they can take care of themselves. A lot of the basis of that came from my experience in the neurosurgical practice. And so I've been consulting for over 28 years, and many of those years were in a neurosurgical practice. And the interesting part of my work is that I didn't treat people. My responsibility was to help figure them out and to explain to them their options and then get them to the spot that seemed to be the best fit for their situation. Now that was pretty cool because I made no money treating people. So I had no incentive to encourage someone to go for one treatment or another. And it was such a good point you're making right there. Woo. Yeah, and it, and it required me to be very objective, you know, knowledgeable about different forms of treatment, and to take the time to help the people I was working with understand it. And, and so, you know, when you look at being a doctor, and I've said this to, to many friends and people I've met, my favorite thing about being a doctor had nothing to do with making this elaborate diagnosis of a rare condition or of recommending an ultra sophisticated surgery or to giving a treatment. But my satisfaction came from working with people and conversing with them to help them become confident that their lives were going to be better, especially if they took charge you know, of their lives. And you'd be surprised how effective treatment is often as much mental and emotional and working with someone that can be trusted as compared to a physical fix. You know, that is really so, so powerful because fear and anxiety, not only do we understand in today's world that they do uh, weaken our immune system, but it also weakens our structural body as well. And right. so having faith and trust in the person sharing with you how to alleviate your pain and to strengthen your body that's a really key component to your healing process oh without it without a doubt and you know we we talked a little bit you know earlier about why these problems you know are occurring in, in the spine care system and how come so many people get stuck there are some important things that everyone should know but they don't and that's that if we're talking about low back pain just by itself, there are over 250 different treatments for low back pain. Whoa. That's a lot. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, I had no you're idea. You're not gonna find that many treatments for diabetes or hypertension or heart disease. So, oh, and this is, this is research. If anybody wants the 
uh, the scientific references on that. I have it. I'll be happy to send it. Yeah, it'll it. be in our show notes, everybody. Go to the show okay. notes for this episode. You'll see all of Ron's uh, links, Dr. Fadola. He's got a lot of great information there, which we'll share again at the end of the episode. But yeah, great. go for it. So, so 250 different treatments, 23 clinical professionals who treat it, and they all treat it differently using one of those 250 different treatments. Now, do you want to know what's the most honest thing that can be said about treating back pain? Yes, I would love to know that. Okay. What's the most honest and thing? This, I'm so and, glad and you this, want to and, and this, the most honest thing someone could say, even if you went to the, the, the ultimate specialist in the world, if they were being honest, here's what they'd say. Everything works for someone. Nothing works for everyone. And there's no way I can tell what's going to work for you or how well it's going to work. So that is one of the biggest challenges when you're treating back pain. No one knows what is going to work or how well it's going to work. And the second challenge, actually there's two more, is that with all of those different treatments, it's impossible to have a command of what they do and the effect they have on your body. In fact, a researcher by the name of Dr. Scott, Scott Haldeman, and I think it was 19, no, it was 2008, the article came out. He compared trying to choose treatment for back pain, making an educated choice, to shopping in a foreign supermarket without being able to understand the product labels. Ooh, that's a good analogy yeah. because, you know, one size fits all fits no one ever hardly. So, <laughs> you know. and, we, and that is true. And that's where when you and go it's to a trial and error process, right? You it, have it to is. figure it out and you have to take into account that person's lifestyle and their willingness to really apply what you tell them to do. Uh, right. Do they apply it properly or don't they? That's going to affect things too, right? Right. Or, or do they have, you know, taking care of themselves and knowing that they're able to is where it should start. But of all those 23 professionals that we talked about who treat back pain, and this could be one of the biggest problems in the spine care system, none of them have the incentive to show you what you can do to help yourself and why you might not need their care or anyone else's. Everybody in the spine care system today, and there are some very intelligent, very good physicians, most are, but they all have the incentive to treat. So what that means is if you go to a chiropractor, you get the chiropractic way. And there are 30 different chiropractic ways. If you go to the pain management doctor, you get the injection, medication, whatever way, and so on and so forth. But there's no one who has the incentive to say, look, here's where you are. This is what we know. This is what you can do. And these are the things you look at to help make choices that fit your life. Wow. So this is, you know, so awesome what you're sharing, Ron. I love the concept that you've created this spine camp because you are moving now into a way of having online courses and uh, opportunities to educate and help people with their issues. And share with us just a little bit about spine spine camp and what does that mean right spine camp fills the need for a service that is impartial and focuses on how someone can take care of their problem on their own now i i am aware that there are many books out there and many magic solutions that you see coming across your facebook feed but they all seem to offer this promise of this is this one secret that no one else knows about and we figured it out and it's going to make your life dramatically better <laughs> oh <laughs> after a while we're like uh then we don't believe anything i think that's the the sad thing about stuff like that is no. it really erodes our confidence to believe anyone that's why i think what you're sharing and why i love what you do is so powerful because you don't really have a reason to just sell one magic potion. You're able to look at the whole picture and offer the things that will be advantageous for that person without having your uh, diagnosis be colored by, right. like you said, an incentive from a pharmaceutical or another kind of a medical supplier or what have you. 
Right. And you, and you mentioned, you know, diagnosis and that made me think of something that um, people also need to understand is that as a doctor, here is what I can be sure when I'm making a diagnosis. I can be sure that someone has an infection, a tumor, a fracture, a severe instability of their spine, a problem that's causing damage to their nervous system immediately, which if not corrected, they will suffer harm. So if I take those handful of things away and we're dealing with people who have back pain, I get up out of the chair and my back hurts. I bend over, it hurts. Typical back pain. I cannot tell you which structure in your back the pain is coming from. Nobody can. There is no finding on MRI that can tell you. There is no physical examination finding. So it comes down to using common sense and rather than looking to diagnose the body part focus on what are the mechanisms of pain or injury what does pain mean and how can i know the difference between hurt and harm to use movement to solve that pain and those are the things spine camp goes into and it gives the backstory information to help people see why it's uh, accurate information so that they can have a buy-in to it rather than just feel they're being told what to do. That is so important. You know, the scripture even talks about faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you're going to have faith in God, you need to hear things about God to build that faith. So whatever we buy into, as you use that expression, or whatever we believe, it comes by a constant hearing of a message. That's why it's so important to pay attention to what we listen to because it colors our world, right? It, so, it does. And, and that reminds me of what I recall. One of the things, one of the many things that I listened to on that episode of Overcoming Disappointment on your you know, recent podcast. Yeah. And, and what, what a statement you made in terms of faith is rallying against fear. Yes. that we're all going to be afraid and we yes. have to find a way to rally against fear and and from a faith standpoint that fear may come from not having complete belief or having inaccurate information now not that spirituality and treating back pain are the same i mean spirituality is far more important than what i do but so many people walk around in fear of their back pain and that fear has become a negative perpetual cycle because of always being told your spine looks like an 80 year old. It's the worst spine I've ever seen. You better not do this. You get exposed to all these medical terms that don't make sense to you. You have MRIs that show abnormalities that are seen in people that have never had a day of pain in their life, but it's not explained to you. And so that fear becomes a cycle that colors everything that you do. And that ends up being very counterproductive. So a part of it is breaking that cycle of fear, but showing why you need to break it and giving the reasons for it so that there is that understanding. And it's almost like a, a mental retraining. And that can be, you know, that can be well, difficult. Well, it's true. It is true. Every aspect of our life, because we are a three-part being, we're spirit, soul, and body. And we need all three parts to be functioning in a healthy kind of way. <laughs> So right. they each have their, their part to play in our overall well-being. So even if we are spiritually healthy and vibrant in that area and we're emotionally healthy, if our body's letting us down, then we're still going to be gimping along through life, not operating in our fullest potential. So all of these work together. And uh, in fact, in 3 John 2, John writes, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So it's the, God's desire for us that we live as healthy as we can in this earth physically, as well as spiritually and emotionally. And I think for us so often, we try to categorize and just focus on one aspect of our life, but we are a full human being with all right. these different facets and we need to take care of all those facets. Right, and, and those facets, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because they really do apply because when, when I'm working with someone, I talk about the, the, the biologic or the physical, and then there's the intellectual or the mental, 
And then there's the emotional, or that could even be called spiritual. Because obviously when we're dealing with the spine, there are reasons why it might hurt or not be able to perform in a given situation. But then we base what's wrong with it on our intellectual. And that, those are the things we've been told. So if yeah. we've been told it's broken, it's bad, someone else has to fix it. Uh, you're going to have problems for the rest of your life. That becomes embedded in us. Yeah, then we buy into that, like you said, and then that's where our faith now is, and then that's manifest that brings it right. about actually. Right, and 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 not to draw an analogy because I'm I'm not qualified to do it, but I'm thinking from a spiritual standpoint, how many people are told, well, if there is a God, then this wouldn't happen, that war wouldn't right. happen, yeah. this bad thing wouldn't happen in your life. Right, and you're wrong information right there. <laughs> <laughs> wrong information and and so that gets into the emotional where with back pain if someone has seen a relative have a very bad outcome with back pain if someone is very unsatisfied with their lives and angry or they hate their employer or they're afraid it's been shown clearly that it's going to negatively impact them so it's important Important that people look at all those three spheres to see how they interrelate because yes. the goal isn't to fix it one way or the other it's to put things together so that people have a more complete life yes yeah and if you don't really look at the whole picture and you're just trying to pick fix a little piece of it you're still going to be off whack off center you know? right 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 yeah, like, like one of those carts that doesn't have the wheel on it, that wobbles yeah, around. You're constantly wobbling back and forth and actually putting more pain on the weaker joints as a result. And so you're really shooting yourself on the foot. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting how so many facets of life really do tie into one another in terms of things like physical and emotional and intellectual and balance whether you're talking about yeah. helping people get over their back pain or have a more spiritual life, yeah. the principles of trust and confidence yes. and belief and guidance and good information and an amount of self-responsibility because God, I imagine, I can never recall God telling me, you have to think this way. You need to make this choice. But I do have the choice of what I want to believe in of where I yeah. want to place my faith and trust. Yeah. And making those good choices, I think, is going to help me a lot. A lot of times, like, like he'll say, you have a choice between life or death, and then you'll say, choose life. So he like gives us the heads up, you know, <laughs> what right, would be right, the better right, choice. Right, <laughs> right, right. But you still have the option to choose which way you would like to go, right? Yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to nudge you a little bit. Yeah, I'll exactly. I'm going to give you kind of a clue. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> what would be yeah. the better option here? <laughs> yeah, that's so great. You know, there's four main things you shared with me, uh, characteristics of the types of things of the people who succeed in their care. What are those four things? Could you just share about that a little bit? Yeah, uh, I'd like to. And the first is that they are informed. And by that, I mean, they're not informed by a pamphlet they get out of their doctor's office or an advertisement they see on TV, but they're informed about what treatments are available and how those treatments work and what their reasonable outcomes are so they have information but to have that information you don't get it in a five-minute visit with a clinician who may spend 15 seconds answering your questions yeah. you don't you, do, you don't walk away in form if someone does answer your questions but they do it in a way where it leaves you with more fear and more questions than before you ask them so being informed involves spending time with someone to make sure that it's being communicated the right way and that it's being understood in the way that is accurate. That's one. Uh, the second, they have a clear idea of what success in treatment means. And, you know, you and I, we probably have unrealistic expectations from certain things, but many people go into treatment thinking success is a perfect cure. And, it rarely is. 
And the reason that can be important is if someone's receiving a treatment and they've gotten to a certain point where they're feeling pretty good, but they're dissatisfied because they're not perfect. Right. They may seek another type of treatment, feeling that what is being done isn't working for them when it is. Yeah, and someone, because sometimes we're prone to um, thinking that we just, in a sense, want to mask the pain so we don't have to deal with it. It's kind of denial, right? <laughs> of the denial, whole thing. Yeah. And, and someone mentioned to me years ago that the enemy of good enough is the desire to be perfect. Mm. So even, you know, I've seen many people uh, when I was in the surgical practice that they, they would have gone and seen their family doctor. The family doctor would have gotten an MRI. It showed some kind of an abnormality. They was referred to the surgeon and I ended up seeing them. And by the time I saw them, let's say it was three or four weeks after their severe episode of back pain, but they were 50 to 70% better. And they go, well, what kind of treatment should I get? And I would ask them are you still getting better? And they'd say, yes. And I go, why do you want any treatment? You never get in the way of something that's going in the right port, so to speak. I like that. And sometimes when you interfere with the direction someone is going, when they're improving, you can actually inhibit that progress or slow it down. So, you know, when I was actively seeing a lot of patients, I never recommended treatment if they were getting better. It is only if they were getting worse or plateaued or there was an area of life that was real important to them that they were not yet able to continue to perform. That's so that's, so <laughs> that's two. And we talk quickly. They make decisions based on information, not out of fear. You know, we've talked about how fear interferes with good rational decision making. Yes. When you're overly emotional, it's hard to step back and assess things and and that is last, an important factor in life whenever fear shows up you know to if, begin to develop that discernment to then detach yourself from that and take a step back and look at it like you say rationally or with common sense because fear is always trying to push you into something right. that's not going to be the best for you yeah, so with, without a doubt. When it rises up, if we can learn to just, well, okay, I recognize that as fear. Let me step back and detach myself emotionally from that and look at it objectively, then we'll make a better decision. And so what would be the fourth thing then you had? Well, the, the fourth was they need to assume responsibility for their own care. So important. And for their own recovery. And whether that's making sure they get the right information but they also need to live right and think right and eat right and do the proper movement and, and take care of their body, of their mind, of their spirit. So many people today, and it may be because of media and marketing and advertising, they will all promote, let us fix you. Mm. And we are going to fix you quickly so that you have to do nothing. Oh, and, man, this will preach even. <laughs> and, and people come in wanting uh, that. And so we're yeah. all taught we don't have responsibility for it. There's yeah. someone out there Beautiful. that is supposed to fix me. And that may work occasionally, but if, if that attitude is adopted, it's eventually going to fail. you got to take responsibility. We have to take responsibility. For ourselves and and That's so often true. we don't but a lot of the reason is too we're not given the guidance to be able to do it because we're afraid because we've gotten bad information and you can see how things a vicious, cycle. Mm -hmm. vicious cycle that works against those who are looking for a solution yeah. wow this has been so amazing i'm so glad we're doing a two-part series because we have some more things that we want to talk about here this has really been good i think it's just fascinating how in what you do to help people uh, objectively look at their situation and find solutions that's going to help them improve their quality of life and so on. It's just so important that we talk about these kind of issues as people because like you said, everybody wants to have that quick fix or to mask the pain so we just try to think it doesn't exist when in reality it is existing and it's getting worse if you're not doing something about it to help it get better. And right. so we have to talk about these things. And the last point you made is like, for me, cha-ching. It's like, 
we have to take personal responsibility for ourselves and realize that the things that we do, the things that we think, the things that we eat, the things that we participate in, they all have an effect right. in our life. And so we have to constantly be reassessing ourselves, if you will, right. to keep tweaking and moving forward to live to our fullest potential. So that's fantastic. You know, in our Epic Conqueror podcast, we're so excited for our listeners that they're hearing this information today. But we always choose in every episode a spiritual weapon to spotlight as epic conquerors. And so for this particular episode, uh, Ron and I were talking before we started the recording, we're going to choose faith and trust as our spiritual weapon, because without that, then fear is the other option. <laughs> That's not the option we want. So we're going to do like God does. You have fear or you have faith and trust choose faith and trust <laughs> absolutely we're going to give you the heads up this would be the wiser every, choice yeah. every single day and, and 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 i know and well you go ahead you had a, you're another epic moment but if i might and because the the concept of fear popped in my mind of how it really works for us or against us and it ties into riding a motorcycle Three years ago, I rode my motorcycle 480 miles to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina to meet my brother-in-law for their fall bike rally. It was right after a horrible storm occurred in St. Augustine, and so for much of the trip, it was windy, 20, 25, 30 miles and an for hour. for those that don't know, because we have people in other countries, St. Augustine is in Florida. Yes, yes, United thank States. you. Okay. And so I was getting bounced all around, and, and as I'm driving up, I look in the distance and there is this huge bridge that is considered, because I looked it up, the tallest, the highest bridge in the western part, in this part of the country. And so as I'm getting up there, I'm thinking, oh, well, I'll just go around it. There was no way to go around it. I had to go over it. Wow. And I got on that and I looked about two oh. feet and my arms were shaking. Oh, and when dear. I got off, I had to stop. But it wasn't until a week or two later when I was thinking about it, I asked myself, if I would have known that I would have gotten across that bridge in that same stormy weather, would I have been so afraid? And I wouldn't have. So I would have had faith. I would have had certainty. And then I asked myself, okay, so I was fearful. Did that fear work for me or against me? And I am sure the fear did not work. For me. So I keep that in my mind anytime I think about fear. Awesome uh, illustration. Did that fear help serve a purpose or did it impair something? And it did not. I got across, but the fear was not helpful. Yeah, that's so good because there are, there's that fear that just paralyzes you. And that's kind of what we're talking about. And then there's that healthy fear, like don't run in front of a Mack truck, you know, on the freeway. Right because you're not going to win that one you know? <laughs> so but we're talking about the kind of fear that will paralyze you and just right. hinder you from making progress so that's really fantastic love that Absolutely. illustration that's a good one now we also have our epic power affirmation and i just am so grateful that we can talk about healing for our physical body because it is such an important part of who we are who god created because god's not against doctors he's not against medicine I mean, he had Dr. Luke on his ministry staff, so <laughs> he was one of his disciples. So obviously, that's something that's in the wheelhouse that God designed for us, and I think it's really powerful. But uh, there's also a spiritual component that when Jesus went to the cross to pay the price for our sins, the Bible tells us so clearly that he took stripes on his back that paid for our sickness and our disease and so that we can declare that you know by his stripes we are healed and we can know that god desires for us to be healed and whole spirit soul and body so our epic power affirmation for this little mini series that we're going to do is i am healed in jesus name you know and that doesn't alleviate us from what we talked about a moment ago about we have a personal responsibility to get the information to do the right things to take care of ourselves and use common sense and all of that. That's part of the healing process. We don't want to say, I am healed in Jesus' name, and then we go on living, doing all the wrong things, eating all the wrong things, thinking all the wrong things, and thinking that somehow we've waved a magic wand and da-da, we're totally 100% healed. 
healed. No, we also have personal responsibility, but this is our epic power affirmation, what we are declaring, that we're moving in the right direction. We're receiving all that God has for us in this area so that we can live in the greatest health possible. So you know how we do it. We all pound on our table or the steering wheel or the car dash, wherever you're listening to this podcast or on your lap even, and we do a drum roll. And then on the count of three, we just shout it out, our power affirmation. I am healed in Jesus name. And that's our declaration that we're going to move in the right direction. We're going to get the information we need. We're going to apply that information and we're going to walk in wholeness. And so here we go. Let's all do our drum roll. One, two, three. I am healed in <laughs> Oh man, there's just something so powerful about that when we realize that God desires for us to be healed and whole in every aspect of our life. You know, Ron, this has been such a great episode, part one of our two part series. On the next episode, we're going to talk about what? Well, we're going to talk about the steps that uh, your listeners, that the people I work with, need to take to be a part of their own solution, to solve their problem on their own and live with more control, confidence, and freedom. And it really comes down to four main things, and that's understanding the mechanisms that cause pain to occur. Oh, don't give them away all the stuff we're going to talk about. Just leave okay. it right there we're we'll talk about those four things. thank you very much <laughs> we're gonna leave it right there so they're gonna All listen right. to us you know epic conquerors we drop our episodes every monday and friday we just love to start the week with a shot in the arm and we like to finish the week work week with the same thing just to help us to have a, an epic um finish to our week as well you know our acronym stands for everything's possible in christ and when we know that we have God with us, we know we can conquer and overcome. As long as we face things, we can fight them and overcome them. So this is no different in dealing with our physical health. We have to face them. We've got to fight them by getting the right knowledge, the right information, the right um, steps to take. And then we have to apply all of that. And as we do that, we come out in a better place than where we started. So that's the joy of that. But we want to just welcome you also to our Facebook community called Epic Conquerors. Imagine that. <laughs> Find us on Facebook and join that community. We would love to have you there. And also, we have an Epic Conquerors Facebook page. And that's where we post our shareable graphics so that you can then post them on your social media, invite your family and friends to listen in on our podcast. Because, for example, there's many people in your timeline and on your social media that deal with back pain issues. And this kind of information would be so helpful to them. And also in our show notes on epicwinforyou.com, you're going to see all the information about Dr. Ron and how you can get in touch with him, how you can be involved in his spine camp and learn all of these things. He's got some free resources and materials for you there as well. All the links will be posted there. So you can take advantage of this amazing man's life and experience and apply it in your life. So people that you know may have these issues and you don't know it. So share these episodes and let others discover this wonderful information that they can have. I love that name, Spine Camp. I just think that's fantastic. It really says in a nutshell what you're doing. You're helping us to be able to be stronger and healthier. And I appreciate that so much. Ron, it was a blessing to have you on this podcast. And I look forward to doing our next one. And It was my just, pleasure. And I thank you. Yes. yes. Awesome. And I'm going to hold you to that motorcycle ride one of these days. <laughs> you bet. We'll get it done. All right. This is that time where we say ciao for now. It's been so great to have you join us today. And we'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye, everyone. Ciao.